The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on Wednesday, the 23rd of Feb. We're looking at this candle right here in the monthly chart. Where does it close? Monday? Is it Monday? I think it's Monday. Let me just check. Monday. Where does it close? Monday at 4 o'clock. Do we take out that low? The 30 with 3, 150 low before then? Or is there some kind of a rally that says, oh, wow, a save we've got on the monthly chart? All right, let's get to the numbers. Dow's up 33 at 33,633. Went all the way to 33,832. Look at all these red candles, three big red candles. You would expect that today at least we get a doji candle or a little bit of a green candle after all the sunny pressure. Now, let's just go through the technicals because a, a couple of people have asked me, would I, uh, subscribers that are looking at the pattern that I discuss is a lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m. Is there a chance for an m pattern? So first of all, uh, let me go to this chart that I show subscribers every day. This is the daily chart. This is just a pure daily chart with a couple of moving averages, plus my notation, plus my arch patterns or whatever pattern it is. There's a chapter wave inside the track repellent zone. Uh, here is the same chart. This time I've got the MACD and the stochastic and the unbalanced volume. Um, with automated support levels, we were right through 33792. Uh, support yesterday. Today that became resistance. It's going to be important to see how we able to manage any kind of rebound from this stage on because now the momentum, so it's starting to weaken. It better come in the next 20, 30 minutes where we get a move down uh, up 17. If it goes down 35, 34, oh, sorry, 35 or 40 points, that's going to be a negative and that says, uh oh, red candle again for the fourth day. But if it manages somehow to turn and then slowly against this backdrop of negativity start to move higher, I think that the actual break of 30 or test of 33,150 will be delayed as some kind of buying comes in at least shorter term. The 120, so this is the 120 minute chart on the right. The other MACD is very weak. The stochastics at 15%. 16% on the daily chart, the stochastics at 12%. That's very negative. That's the equivalent of seeing it up at 95 or 90% and saying as long as it flattens at 90%, that's a very positive thing. This this suggests weakness. And uh, it went right to the 120-minute chart, 14 and 9 period moving averages are kind of combining here at 33,857. And... Uh, that was pretty much the high. Now we're pulling back, and now it's down 17. So we're going to be watching this very, very closely. We want to be looking also at, here we go, the weekly chart says this, a very sharp, I, I don't usually like these unless they reverse immediately, immediately meaning as they're making some kind of a low, the propellant side of it just takes off, and we haven't got that at all. In the weekly chart, this is a narrow dreaded H pattern, and that makes that 33,150 level really key to be monitoring. And as I say, that monthly chart sitting on the 14 period moving average right now, not a good sign at the moment. Now let's go to the S&P. S&P will start backwards. We'll go to the monthly chart. Monthly chart sitting on the 14 period moving average for a second time, but it hasn't taken out the 42.2262 low of the 24th. Um, the weekly chart, there's the same pattern that I call that narrow dreaded H pattern, just like a single leg up, and then it fails. Uh, is it going to continue low? or well, we don't know. The MACD's weak, stochastic's weak, the on-balance volume's weak, and the line went under the 14, so, so there isn't any real technical strength there other than to get one of these flurries to the upside. We've seen since Sunday night, we've seen how many flurries to the upside fail and then go really negative. I'm, I'm wondering if today that pattern is a little bit of a fake out because 
at some point there is some kind of a buying coming in. We'll see very very soon at 43. It needs to hold 4300. It's at 4306 right now. The S and P, the short term, is going to be what we're monitoring. The QQQ. Now this is going to be interesting because the QQQ has just been decimated. I mean, what a move from 368 uh, a couple of months ago to a low of the three. 334 level uh, doesn't sound like much. That's a 10, 10%, 11% correction. But some of the stocks within it have been absolutely brutally beaten up. This is down 20 cents at 337.90 at the low of the day. Here's its doji, long-legged doji candle. We held. It's unbelievable. Look, 334.15 on the 24th of January. Rallies all the way to 370. That's, uh, uh, what is that, 30, 36 points, about a 10% rally or more. And then it comes back down. And what does it do yesterday? It goes right to 334.35, 20 cents above that left side low. Will it take it out today? This is a big, a big moment. Now let's go on. We've got, um, let me get to this, IWM. IWM is the Russell 2000. Hasn't gone to yesterday's low yet. It's up only 10 cents at 196.83. But most importantly, at 196, it's six points above the 190.60 uh, low that was made on the 24th. So the big question is, and a number of people ask me, wait, are we going to be looking at the IWM as a potential, this is the small caps, the Russell 2000, as a potential, look at this on the week on the weekly chart, underneath the nine period moving average, which is pink, underneath the 14, which is at 208, so 204 to 208, you've got your two moving averages in resistance. And most importantly, what we're looking at is, the weekly is not a great chart, neither is the monthly. But with the daily holding so well, it's saying there are some signs that you could get a rotation that perhaps in includes, on the one hand, some of the really absolutely smashed tech stocks, just as a counter trend relief rally. But the 2000 Russell small caps actually starts to rally a little bit better. That's something we're watching, no positions yet. Most importantly, we did take some positions in, in, in indexes. Rather than specific stocks, we do have our stock selection. Um, just we've narrowed it down. We've raised a lot of cash. I want to be able to experiment just to a certain extent, not that I want to, to experiment with uh, my uh, subscribers' um, money, because this is something that I'm looking at in a, in a very technical and practical sense that says, Right at this particular point, if ever there was a chance to move above the left side arch in the dreaded H pattern without breaking into the dreaded H, meaning you plunge below the left side low, with all of these um, indices, not necessarily the futures, but all of the indices themselves, the cash index indices holding so well, right here it would be a surprise to the market, a pleasant surprise actually, if we're looking at some semblance of initial buying just starting to creep in here and holding that's the most important thing holding and we'll just grab the vix index as we're going to the break and the vix index is still up it's up three cents at 28.84 if it takes out 3204 the double top that occurred over the last week at any stage it doesn't have to close it just takes it out this market will definitely test local. i'll be back in a moment that's a Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We're back. About jumping, I just uh, I had a question in the den, and I thought I'd just grab the chart. I'll talk about it right now, although I've got a lineup here of, of, of a bunch of questions to come in. So this is OMCL, which is called OmniCell Inc. Now, OmniCell, I, it doesn't look like a, um, a biotech company. I should have quickly looked. Is this a in, in the uh, in the uh, communications area? Uh, let me just do this real quickly. OmniCell, O M N I C E L, uh, Inc. Yeah, let's see. Oh, there we are. Out comes with oh, enhance patient-centered care, improve quality and patient outcomes with programs from uh, Emmy. Engage patients to be active in their health. Learn more about Emmy's programs. Emmy. Okay, am I right? No, wait, what, is that what I'm looking at? No, I'm looking at any education. That's not what I wanted. OmniCell. Wait a minute. Does what? Ah, there it is. Uh, OmniCell is a leading, a leading digital transformation of med medication management through a powerful combination of advanced automation, pharmacy software, and technology enabled services so supported by cloud data platform. Okay. So I'm pleased I got to read that because the chart itself did not look like a biotech. This is this is in the the medical can I call it instrument really uh, kind of it's in that same area. Uh, and, and we just got out of our Thermo Fisher after all these years, I mean, year, over a year. Uh, we've, we've taken our profit and just uh, we're out of it. We had big profits on the way up. We took a little bits off, a little bits off, and finally I just got out because I don't think that that's starting to work now. So when I'm looking at this, it looks the same. But what I wanted to show you, so the question was, um, uh, what the question is, if I can just find it here. Uh, there it is. Could I look? I just could I look at it? Yes. So the pattern I look at on the upside, you know what I normally do? If there's a big move up with a long legged a candle, I grab the outer ends and I just put in a rectangle. That's all. You, I, I've got it for trade station. It has some, maybe some packages don't, but you can just draw a line at the top and a line at the bottom. That's all. And then what it does is normally what I say is if there is a, a move that holds the, the gap up low, there's a gap down, but a gap, a gap up low, 
then you could in a shorter time frame, in this case a daily chart, see a uh, like a 120 minute chart, see a move towards just at just under or right on the high going to at least four peaks, maybe even five, and then you've got to be careful. And in this case, we've got this gap down, huge gap down. So I'm going to treat this like it's technical Friday with a with gap down. 143 round number high on the 15th after the day before making a low of 147.17, leaving a huge gap. Goes all the way down to 120, 119.30. And then bounces the next day into the wick of the top of the wick of the candle, not the candle itself, the body, but the wick. And then has one, two, three, four. This is the fifth session with lower lower highs and lower lows. So I thought, okay, this is exactly what I talk about. This is the upside down move of that same pattern. Instead of on the upside, I drew the rectangle. And now it's going towards very close to, so the day's young, close to, right on or just below the um, left side low of that 19, uh, 119 area, and it's a trading at 123.67. Most importantly, what I would say is, after a gap down like this, yes, it's good that it didn't take out the low, but look what it's done. So I would say that this, I would not be, if you're looking at, if you are long, you're looking, I'd say you have to take something off, even if there's a good bounce. This is in trouble right now. I, I wouldn't mess around. You know what you can get. I would take it. That's number one. Number two is on the upside, it's got so much work to do because that gap down was meaningful because for three, for four, set five, this is the fifth session. It hasn't been able to break above that round number high. Um, so I am saying to you, this is, you got to be very careful of the stock, the monthly chart. This is almost, I have to wait for the month to finish, but this is almost guaranteeing a sell signal. The month, the weekly chart is in a sell mode. The daily chart is a sell mode. I'd be really careful, and I'd put it into the same category as I would. I look, look, this is not quite the same pattern, but it's close. This is Edwards Life Sciences, kind of the same thing. What, what is CLB? I haven't even looked at that for a while. This is uh, what you call a lab. Yeah, call laboratories. No, this is a little bit different. Okay, so that doesn't count. But our, our uh, TMO, Thermo Fisher, look what this did. Great day today. Nice $12 balance. Uh, we're not out of it. But look, it's the same sort of thing. These are having scientific uh, um, instruments, medical instruments, and equipment. I think we'll be looking at a, a kind of a tough time right now. They will be back a little later, Give maybe give them another month or two. Good. So now what I'm looking at, uh, so, so I, hope you ha I hope I can uh, help you there with that analysis. I just wanted to show you, let me get this chart in the background. So the question came up, Ted wanted to know and said, there is a 300-period um, a, a simple moving average. Uh, do you ever use it? And But look at the way the S, the SPY, is held perfectly. Look, here's the SPY. Absolutely correct. Perfect. When I say perfectly, look at that green line. Look at how it hit it with that uh, Chapman Wave Roman, green Roman candle on the upside from a low. Look how beautiful. And then look at it did, uh, yesterday, just perfectly. Is it going to break it? Well, the age pattern says you've got to be careful. There is an opportunity now for that weakness to show with all the technicals still weak. So be be very careful. Now, the other thing that we're looking at, so I just wanted to show you that's the SPY with and the S&P cash is the same SPX.X. Uh, whoops, where did I type that up? I wrote it correctly. There. Uh, you see, exactly. So yes, I like to do, whenever people mention something, uh, about moving averages or whatever that they use. Uh, I, I like to check it out, and it is valid. But I have to tell you, it was valid, valid for this perfectly. And it turns out Thermo Fisher was exactly right. But most of the time, the 300, um, I just find that the ones that I use seem to, the way, you remember, it's not what you use, it's how you use it. If you use something over and over and over, you get to get, you, you become really good at it. So that's what I'm saying. Stay with what works for you if it's good, um, and but be strict about your, your methodology so that uh, you don't you don't form fit it at any point. You don't change it just to fit what, what kind of looks good. Okay, next thing we're looking at here is, um, so that was a question, a question about, 
Uh, CVM, was that the question? Let me see. First one came. Uh, do you know what is happening to train companies like NSC? Let's go to NSC. Uh, this is Norfolk Southern. I made a peak G top. Uh, well, 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 wrong. Oh, I have this all notated at some point. Down sharply today. Down 679 at 251.56. Um, this is, well, what I was saying before is that we saw the let me do this over here one second. I'm just going to just to show you where we are. Okay, here's your low bar. Let me just look to the left. So, yeah. And then went peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And then it went E, F. Um, and this is the Chapman Wave double hump in the MAGD, that extra arch formation. So, uh, I'll talk about it as soon as we get back. But my suspicion is that the rail companies, because of the uh, what's happening in all the uh, ports. I think that that's starting to affect the market as well. They're sitting on the 200 people moving page. I'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're looking at the IYT, the Transportation Index, also making that arch formation underneath the 200-period exponential moving average. And that is saying at this particular point, not having turned that 200-period moving average into some kind of a support level, that goes with what we're looking at the, in CSX. I, oh, I typed it into the den by mistake. CSX. 
which is uh, CSX. This is the uh, rails, and this is, I think, Berkshire Hathaway has a good position in it. Look, makes the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. So this is already a very key moment uh, all around because what we're looking at is the strength that I was anticipating was a possibility today, at least the start of some kind of a, a bounce towards the upside. Uh, you get, I think you need the transportation average to actually get there. And that means that the, in the rails, because the, the uh, CSX, of course, is part of the rail, uh, NSC is part of the rails. So this, I think, has to do more with the, uh, the shipping aspect than anything else. And if that's the case, this is something that we have to respect as an overall negative for the economy. If you put it together, you know, uh, on on the news, on one of the news channels last night, in fact, on a few news channels last night, um, just as I was flipping around, I just happened to pick up saying, if you have a book for the Cape, you better get to it because um, uh, one guy, a real estate agent uh, said, 72% or 78% of the, of the inventory we've got is already uh, taken for. So I, the, the people are just wanting to get out. And that says to me that if you're looking at JETS, which is the US Global JETS ETF, maybe this is going to be local, but maybe at the same time, the high gas prices is people won't be flying, they'll be driving. But at the same time, maybe they won't be driving because with the higher uh, um, gas prices, it, it, that's a problem for a lot of people. So here I'm looking at the JESS, which is the US Global JESS ETF, holding pretty well off the most recent lows down the 19 area. It's at 21.79. But something has to happen really quickly for this to show um, that, and we'll put together Disney. Uh, Disney is also off a slow of 129 on the tw around about the 24th of Jan, ran up to the 150s, and here it is at 148. It's kind of struggling. It's not really leading the pack, but of course, I'm treating this as a media company. The stock we did have, we don't have it anymore, is six, which is Six Flags Entertainment, is holding pretty well, but it's stuck in a range, and it hasn't. It's made this peak C1, peak C2 double top. It's down 43 at 43.54, 52 cents. I consider this to be much more of a tell because it's a much purer thing. It's Six Flags Entertainment Corp. There's outdoor activities, entertainment. Um, you know, got your your fun fairs. You've got your all those, those the, the, the equipment that goes with it, uh, whether it's the octopus or whatever they have. Uh, it has the roller coasters, the works. So I'm watching this really closely because. If the mark, if the general on oh, the 24th earnings come out, that is tomorrow. I forgot all about that. Ho, ho, ho. Remind me tomorrow. We want, maybe it's after the bell. I hope it's before the bell. But we'll be looking at this Thursday and Friday because this is a big tell for me because if you can start to see Six Flags Entertainment really push into the 48s, it's the 43 right now, 4361, I would consider that that's a tell to say, you know what? There is going to be some kind of a comeback, and let's watch those stocks. And then I think it might lead Disney to the upside, although Disney has media as well. So I, it's not a pure play. All right, I have, let me let me continue here. I got questions about crude oil and uh, certain uh, oil stocks. Let's just do gold first. Gold is up a dollar at 1908. It made a leg C, and now it's at, in this leg C. I had the one to one extension based on the Chapman methodology. It almost went to my first one, which is the conservative one right here, which was 1920. It went to just under that. Yesterday, it pulled back. If it breaks that, the next level of, of key resistance will be right there, one to one to the up here, one to one to the upside, which is around about 1928, 1930. So that's really what I'm looking at. And remember, I said, gold hasn't broken out yet. I think it's in much more in play than we had thought of before, um, in that it was. I called it intraday trading, that the Bitcoin was really taking the lead. Now Bitcoin, I, as far as I'm concerned, it's done for now. At some point, it's going to have a really big move to the upside. But at this point, it's just holding in the lower range. And gold is taking its place. Look, gold is actually much better. But until gold starts to trade in the 1940s, maybe touch 1950, that, would be, that to me would be a breakout in both the weekly and the monthly chart. And that would be really important. 
And then I've got uh, the resist side. And if you talk about that now, we'll, see, we'll deal with it when we get there. I think there will be a leg D and how this leg D holds is going to be really important. And what I'm looking at here in the silver, see, the whole thing is that gold, I think, is more um, the icon, the gold icon, the fear factor icon that geopolitically is, is the go to place. Whereas uh, silver is kind of the follower, but in this particular instance, if uh, silver takes out the high that was made, this is great peak A, great peak B, uh, the stochastic goes over 80%, that becomes blue, and now we've got a leg D to the upside, there could be an overlapping wave, we do that, Chapman wave overlapping wave, should I talk about it now, I'll talk about it, now. I'll talk about it uh, very, very briefly. What happens in a Chapman wave overlapping wave, it goes to usually a peak C, you can do it in B, but usually it's a peak C, and then all of a sudden, the, the price pulls back, and it pulls back quite sharply, but it doesn't negate the starting point. In this case, the starting point, point was in December at about 2140s. And what happens is it starts and it makes underneath it, it makes a brand new peak A. I call it gray and then a peak B. If it goes, the stochastic goes back over 80%, I have to say that should be a buy mode going to a D. Then it goes to, oh, this is a C. Oh, oh. That was a gap because of the holiday. I didn't see that. So this is interesting. So this becomes C. Now, an overlapping wave says that if there is a pullback here underneath that previous high, and that high was uh, 24.75 on the 20th of January, and then all of a sudden you take, and it makes a peak C, and then it breaks above that and starts leg D, you get an overlapping wave that says there's a really good chance you're going to reinvigorate or reinstitute uh, that previous peak C to get an overlapping wave to a D, and then it moves up quite sharply, and then it comes back and retests the breakout point. So this is very positive for, for silver right now. If this leg, leg C, goes above that, you have to pick it up immediately as a D, because it, this is the starting point was way lower down. So those of you who do Chapman Wave methodology, you Chapman Waivers know exactly what I'm talking about. Otherwise, the eyes glaze over like mine would if I was just listening. Um, and um, yeah, good, good luck, uh, Mr. at the dock. Um, and now what we're looking at is, so that says the transportation index is really important, number one. The transportation index has a mix of the airlines, the rails, and the, and the truckers. Why, I think, is the one that I usually look at for trucking. I always use this, and someone's going to tell me, no, it's not a trucker, but I think it is. Allegheny Core holding towards the recent highs. You know what? Oh, I must talk about these trucks. When you're on, when we were coming back from, where was it the other day? I think it was from New York. Um, I, I, there was a point where I said to Mark, just look at this. We were actually on Mass, on the Mass Pike, on 90, and I said to my wife, just count every second vehicle is a truck. You can't believe how many trucks are on the road. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, let's see. So what have we got here? We've got, oh... Uh, yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, I, ooh, it's going to be tough, but I, I think I can do that question I had here for my engineer. Um, so th this is what I wanted to show you. You know how I talk about these double tops? Uh, look at this. Uh, GD is uh, General Dynamics, Aerospace Defense Security. So it goes to a leg D in the daily up at about a 220 level and pulls back today. The uh, weekly chart is in a leg D, and I haven't finished this. Look at the chap wave inside track repellent zone right there. Okay. So it's in that zone, and it's kind of pulled back into it, but it did break out for a fraction yesterday. This is what I'm talking about. How do, how do whatever the tradable is, how do they treat the tops if they're double tops? How do they treat the bottoms? And isn't it absolutely incredible that you can go for this amount of time? Look, 2018 March, the top is 230 round number high with a champ wave two bar reversal and at a peak F, look at that little doji, and it plummets down to 100, more than cut in half. Then it rallies back to peak A, a little mini A right there. Then it goes B. C, and it goes to D within this trend line that I drew, the Chapman Wave inside a wedge target resistance line. And what was the high? 220, uh, let me just get you the exact high, 220.10 in leg D in the, in, the, in the monthly chart. And if I take this left side high of 2018 in March to the low of March of uh, 2020, at 100.55, and I do the plumb line right there. Look at this. Here's the plumb line. Where's the plumb line? If you're able to visually see that it could be a halfway marker in a cup formation or an arch formation, that's what I call the plumb line. Sometimes it's so lopsided, you just have to move it. You have to choose particular candles. I do that. I show subscribers what to do, especially in my uh, webinars. But look at this. General Dynamics is in leg D, it's got one month to go to test the 230 round number high that was made back in 2018, four years ago. I, I just find that so fascinating. Now look at the beautiful symmetry. Look at an inverted, kind of an inverted head and shoulders bottom. Anyway, enough with that. So what I wanted to say is these double tops are really potent. How, how whatever market we're looking at, you can deal with it. So um, I, I wanted to just point that out. There was another one. I think, uh, let me see. I think it's Mass. And uh, this is MA. Yep, this is it. MasterCard. Oh, I should have actually typed in the numbers. I forgot to do that. MasterCard makes a high recently of 399.92. The high that was made back in 2021 was 
401.50. It goes in the 400 area, it goes to within two points after all this time, after smashing down to the 300s, it goes back and it retests that level. I, I, there's no other way I can count this at this particular point. I suppose I could call it an F, but I'm calling it a B and a G in the, in, that's the weekly chart, G in the daily chart. And look at this, it's down four points at 364.15 right now. Um, this is very interesting. Uh, double top, how does it treat the double top? And that's the reason why I considered that this QQQ, it's still the day is young, everything's young. The 334.15 low that was made on the 24th, 334.35 was a little yesterday. We we're so close. We were 336.06. Are we going to take it out or is there going to be a sudden turnaround in the next day or so? It could go lower and then turn around. But I think we're looking at this as just the potential to say this is where you can expect a chance of some kind of reversal to the upside. It doesn't have to happen, of course, but this is where I anticipate this is where the evidence comes out. All right. So um, let's go on to the next thing, which is a question about, uh, yeah, so trucks. So what I'm saying is that I, I, I saw the figure at some point, and I was just, in fact, let me just type it in right now. So while we've got a little bit left in this particular segment, um, I'll, I'll just type it in here and I'll put in how many trucks are on the road in the USA daily? And let's just see. I, I know I was absolutely astounded. Uh, you, did you mean how many trucks are on the road in the USA daily? Yes, that's what I meant. Um, how many trucks on the road any time, one time, 2017, 20, 21? Did they give it to me recently? Trucking statistics, his number of vehicles in operation, 2021. All right. I, 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 there were just under 284 million vehicles in the third quarter of 221. But let's see on the road at any one time. Oh, let's just go to 2020 and see what happens. It says, how many semi, semi trucks are on the ro US road? Um, oh, of course, they give you everything else. But I racked up 100,000. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in how many trucks there are. All right, I can't say because I thought it would be, but I, I was just astounded. But I'm not astounded whenever I'm driving and I'm on like uh, 84 uh, or uh, 95, uh, I, I just, I'm astounded. 91, I, I just keep saying, wow. And actually, the funny thing is, when we go to New York, I don't go to the Merritt Parkway, which is so beautiful that in Connecticut, they have these beautiful bridges and all. I just want to move. I'm moving, I think, where the trucks are, that's where you move. <laughs> That's where I go. So um, I, I have nothing against. Someone said uh, there are too many truckers. You know that's how we. That's how things are moved. I don't know. You, know, you can change it, but that's the way things are moved. And I, it's just you got to respect that. And I have to. I respect. Uh, you know, a trucker driving and driving and driving. Um, it's a, it's a tough job and crazy drivers. I mean, you got someone cuts in front of you. Um, I just I have a lot of respect for truckers just for the, the what, what they do and how they do it. That's all. So uh, all right, let's get back to our story. I wanted to go through a couple of things here. I was uh, FXI. Thank you, GT. Yeah, I haven't looked at the FXI for a little while. I consider that this is still under pressure. This is the Chinese. Uh, this is the China iShares China large cap ETF. It's trading down today, down just twelve cents and thirty five sixty one. But there's the dreaded H. I've been talking about this for some time. I just, I don't see anything in China yet. Uh, in fact, we're having a tough enough time here. I just wouldn't be going to anything Chinese at this particular point. Could be totally wrong. So, the, okay, question came up. I mentioned, I, I, I don't know if I put it into my newsletter yesterday. I had it already. Uh, so crude oil now is up $1.56. But I had UNG as a buy yesterday, and we would have got it. Uh, UNG, I wanted to say, you know, if, if crude oil pulls back or whatever's going on, even though it's the season of topping uh, for natural gas, I see some strength. So maybe let's buy it. And I, I put it and buy it here, which is at 15. It was 1587. It's trading now at 1636. It's actually moving quite nicely. I, I, I think if it's a play right now, I don't think it's a play on the winter. Winter's 
I'm not done, but it's, it's getting close. I think it's a play on supply. So I'm going to keep my eye on this United States natural gas fund. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 79, S&P's down 14, and we've got a lot to discuss. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I, I just heard um, Larry's internet, Larry Pesavento's internet is out um, he's going to, he, he just has to wait to see as soon as it comes back on. I, I, maybe it's a storm. I don't know what it is. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'll start his show. I'll just continue my show, but during his hour and hopefully at any point, if he gets it back online, he'll just give us a yell and say, I'm back. And he'll just barge in and, and, and continue his, his show. Um, so I'll just keep going for a little while longer. Dow's down 59, SB's down 14. Had a question about, I'll, I'll do all the different uh, commodities I, I've been wanting to do that I missed out today, today in my show because of the other questions that I had. But Halliburton is holding really well. It's at 3180. HAL is a symbol that's up 34 cents at 31.80. I do have this as a potential PG, so there could be a bit of a pullback here. So I, it's a question about the analysis, but I do have it in, in a leg C in the weekly and probably going to be making a peak C by Friday. I don't know. I'm just saying. So I, I think that this is still in play. Crude oil is still in play for a while longer. And as I see it, um, I would just... 
I'd be lightening up just a tad if you got good profits, but I would not be getting out. I just, you know, just lighten up and you can say, you know what, at 31.81, if it drops a little bit under 30, I might be ready to add that back and be ready to put it back or just stay in your position if you had good profits. Just give it a little more time. You know, it's the same chart as CVX, which is uh, the same. You remember I said, I think this is a peak F at 139.43 with one cent higher, double top. So it could pull back a little bit, but it's still looking really good in the weekly chart and the monthly chart. So CVX is holding. So keep in mind that that's what we're looking at. PSX question about PSX. PSX is is that Philip? Yep, Phillips. You see, he has a good example of what I'm looking at. It's pulled back at recent high of 92.06. It's the same category. It isn't as strong as any of the others. Maybe it's a better dividend. I don't know. But at 84. I think it could pull back just a little bit. It must hold 82 or else it's got a more of a problem. This is a little bit not as good a chart a back. So I'll be back for trade work you see. It should be Larry's time. It's obviously not his show. But I'll be back to fill in that time.